So we started thinking about this, and we're like, all right, let's, you know, I, I, I cooked up a little, little thing that, that people on our floor, grad students, could label this stuff. And that worked great for a while until SIGGRAPH deadline came around, and professors started getting mad that their students were working on, were labeling faces rather than, you know, working on their SIGGRAPH papers. So then finally we were introduced to, um, to this wonderful thing called Amazon Mechanical Turk. And so if I can just see a quick show of hands, how many people are familiar with mTurk? Ah, great, so I don't have to really go into this. So mTurk has been really fantastic. And you know, it's, it's much more efficient and much cheaper than, than grad students or even undergrads. Um, and so using this, we've been able to gather just a huge number of labels in a very short amount of time. Uh, and I think this has really made a qualitative difference in what's possible now. OK, so now we have images that are labeled. So let's see how we actually train an attribute classifier. And so let's look at a specific example of gender. For, um, and so here we have some images of males and we have images of females. And now what we're going to do is we're going to extract a number of low-level features from this. right? And these are all different types of, of features. And so to go into a little bit more detail, we divide up the problem into sort of regions on the face and then the types of features to extract from each region. And so we have uh, 14 different regions on the face, which correspond to things like the eyes, the mouth, the forehead, the chin, and so on. And then for the features, we have sort of a, a, a collection of features, which are sort of different types of information to extract. So it might be RGB values. It might be HSV values. It might be, it might be edge magnitudes or orientations. And then you, know, you could normalize these things in different ways. You could aggregate them in different ways. So you could, you could just concatenate them, or you could construct a histogram, or you could take the mean and the variance, and so on. So we have you know, a, a number of, what, 20 different feature types. And so combining these together, there are 280 different feature classes that we can extract from each image. And now what we want to do is for this particular attribute, for gender, we want to say, what are the best features to use? Right? And so we have this feature selection process, which essentially tries to find not necessarily the optimal, but certainly something that's tuned to gender. And the way we do this is using a greedy iterative approach. So in the first round, we train classifiers, in our case, R uh, RBF SVMs for each of these feature classes using the images. And then using these, we find the one with the best cross-validation accuracy. And so for gender, you know, we might end up picking RGB values on the face, as, or, or on most of the face, as the first feature. And then we go on to round two, where we use this feature to initialize, and then try adding all the remaining features. And then we find the best one again, and so on for a number of rounds. We typically go five or six rounds. And so you know, this process takes several hours. But once it's done, it's done. Because once it's done, you have um, you have a gender classifier. Yeah. So we looked at boosting as well. Um, it was a little bit trickier to get it to work right, and it didn't seem to work quite as well. Um, but this was early on. We were just sort of trying a bunch of stuff. Uh, I think you know. I think there are many different ways we could do this this feature selection, and um, it's not clear to me by any means that we have anything close to the best. Um, but it's the kind of thing where we had you know, 20 different directions to go in, and so we haven't been able to go back and explore this, this option of what to do. So, OK, so once we go through this training process, we can do it for many different attributes, because we have, we have labels for many different attributes. And so here are some of our attributes and the accuracies of our classifiers, so out of 100%. And you can see most things are you know, in the 80s. There are some that are higher in the 90s, some that are lower in the 70s. Um, here are some more attributes. So on the whole, we do quite well. You know, these aren't perfect, but on the other hand, they're generally correct uh, on, on these attributes. So the other thing that we're thinking about is that attributes you know, are so intuitive for faces. If you saw this person, you could very well use these words to describe her. But that's not the only way people can describe faces. Another common technique that people use for describing someone is saying something like, you know, this person has eyes that are like Penelope Cruz and a mouth that's like Angelina Jolie, right? And so we wanted to have some sort of attributes which could encode this kind of information, right? These kind of similes. And so we built these things called simile classifiers in a fairly similar way, where instead of labeling attributes on images, we labeled identity. And so we had a number of images of Penelope Cruz and then a number of images of other people. And now we looked at one part of the face, for example, the eyes, and we trained a classifier using these as the, as the inputs. And so what this classifier is learning is really how similar do your eyes look to that of Penelope Cruz's. And then what we could do is we could do this for many different people 
across many different parts of the face, so for the eyes, the mouth, and so on. And now we have this collection of attributes, which are so-called simile classifiers. Um, and so this was sort of another way of getting at some describable information uh, about people without using sort of uh, explicit attributes. OK, so I've talked about how you can build this database now of, of images and attributes. Um, and so now let's start looking at different applications, uh, in particular this, this bottom part and the composition function. So the first application is searching for faces. And this is work that was presented at ETCV 2008. Um, and we also have a longer version coming out in PAMI this year. Um, and so the idea is simple. You know, we want to go, for example, if you go on Google Images and you search for smiling Asian men with glasses. So as of, you know, 2000, of ETCV uh, in 2008, this is what you would get on Google. And you find you know, results are not very good. Roughly half of them are not relevant. And the other half are taken from stock photo websites. Um, and the problem with stock photo websites is that they have limited collections. And so they can afford to pay people to label each image manually or tag it. Uh, but obviously, when you look at the trillions of images on the web, this isn't, this isn't going to scale. You can't pay, pay people, even on MTurk, enough to, to label every image. So, and by the way, if you, if you look at results now on Google, um, it's basically all stock photo websites. I mean, that's all the results that you get. So we wanted to see, could we do better? And could we do better using these attributes? And so let me go through in a little bit of detail what we do on the runtime side. So we have a query, uh, which is text. And then we have a parser, a language parser, which is essentially a dictionary that maps uh, terms that people use to our attributes. And so for example, if you, if you type in male, it'll search for male. But if you type in man, it might search for male plus old. Or boy might be male plus young, and so on. And so once we get a list of attributes from the query, we can then use our composition function. And the composition function is simple. All we do is we take the attribute values we've already computed on our database and multiply them for the, the attributes that the people search for. And we take this product, and we sort by that product, and we show the top results. And so here we go. So here's the same query, smiling Asian men with glasses. And you can see the results here are, are much, much better. Right? These are all smiling, men with, uh, smiling Asian men with glasses, except maybe this guy who might not be Asian. And so you know, we can do this for many different queries. So we can say older men with mustaches, or attractive influential vision researchers, or you know, things like that. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, so it seems like this, this sort of works. Uh, but on the other hand, there's something a little bit unsatisfying about this, and in particular, the C, this multiplying attribute values in the database per image. And the reason is that because we don't have perfect attribute classifiers, right? they're 80 to 90% accurate, as you start multiplying more of these together, you start getting worse and worse results because you start mixing in things which aren't actually matching. And so we partnered with Terry Bolt at the University of Colorado, and they have this nice work on fusion called uh, Robust Fusion Extreme Value Theory for Recognition Score Normalization. And using their fusion stuff, we were able to do sort of a much better composition using our attributes. And so we've put up a demo called Mug Hunt. Um, and so let me go to that now. And we can try out something simple first. So here's Asian women. Um, and you know we can go out to page 8. You know, and even out here, we see we're fairly good. We start to make mistakes now. There's some men in here and so on. Um, but we can, sorry? By this, uh, this fusion technique that they're using. So they use the fusion. It's essentially sort of they normalize the scores that we get from the attributes. And then they have some fusion to detect when individual attributes are failing. And then they rank them so that the, the most likely results are at the beginning. And then they get worse as you go on. And so you know, we could do other stuff. We could do Asian women smiling. We can do kids outdoors, right? And so if you look at this stuff, they're almost all outside, I think. Um, and I don't know, does anyone here have something they want to try? We don't actually have that. <laughs> so turns out detecting visual vision uh, researchers from, from the images is not, not too easy. So. So anyways, if you think of stuff, let me know afterwards, uh, after the talk, or you can try it out yourself at mughunt.securex.com. All right. So, no, so we can't do similes in there yet. Uh, it was more of a sort of interface question. How do you go about 
letting people do that. Um, OK, so the second piece of work is face verification. And this was presented at ICCV 2009 in Japan. And this will also be in our PAMI paper. So we sort of combine these two things into a longer, longer thing. Um, and so we looked at verification, which is a problem of saying, given two images, are they of the same person? Right? And one of the things we found, you know, so Peter is a, a face expert. And over the years, he has looked a lot at, at face verification. And what he finds is that even the best algorithms often confuse faces like these. Right? And even though um, you know, we look at these and we say, clearly, once a man, once a woman, they should never match, because they happen to have the similar poses, and because their hairstyles are similar, and because other things happen to match up, they might be, the, the algorithms might say, oh, this is the same person. Or uh, on the flip side, you might have two images of the same person like this, and the algorithm will say, well, these are not the same person, just because they happen to have different hairstyles and different lighting and different viewpoints, and the expression is very different. And in particular, expression is something that I think really trips up algorithms, because many of them sort of implicitly assume that the face is a rigid object. And it's clearly not a rigid object. And as soon as anyone has expression, you see that. And I think this was, in particular, one of the things that you really found from looking at old uh, face data sets is that people would generally be very neutral when they would take their photos. And so even though they were systematically varying the lighting and the viewpoint and even camera sometimes and so on, they wouldn't really vary the expressions. And so you'd find that algorithms which work great on that completely fall apart when you look at real world images because of things like expression. So we wanted to apply our attributes to this. And so here, the composition function that we use is essentially a distance between the attribute vectors of two different images. And so in a little bit more detail, the way this works is that we have a second stage classifier. And what this does is it uses training pairs of images of same people and different people. And then from each pair, we extract the attribute values. Um, we then combine the attribute values together, which is essentially some sort of difference between the two attribute, attribute values uh, for each attribute. And we feed this as input to our classifier. And again, we use uh, an SVM. We, we can use an RBF or a linear. The RBF does slightly better, but the linear does mostly fine. Uh, and so now given a new pair of images, we can extract the attributes, feed it to this classifier, and it'll tell us whether they're same or different, and give us some sort of confidence on, on how same or different they are. And so using this, we want to see you know, how well do we do. So we looked at the label faces in the wild benchmark. And this is, I think, quickly becoming sort of the de facto benchmark for face verification because it's a very challenging data set, as you can see here. There are images taken from news sources, from Yahoo News, I think, over the course of a year. And they have people who are not necessarily looking at the camera, who you know, are, are on all different poses and expressions and lightings and so on. You know, all the kinds of stuff that you would see in, in real life. And so before we started, this was sort of the, these were the, the state of the art results. And in fact, I'm omitting their half a dozen more. Um, but the best result was around 78.5% on, uh, on this data set. And this is how we did with, with attributes and, and our similes. So, and this is only using attributes and similes. We're not using any low-level information in here. And so we do you know, much, much better. And this was quite surprising to us um, that using just attributes, uh, we, we can do so much better than these methods based on low-level techniques alone. Um, and then you know, this, this is from 2009, from right before ICCV. Uh, and since then, we've continued to work on this and in particular look at how we can combine our attributes with low-level features. And so we're still state of the art. We're at 88.25. Um, and since then, there have been a number of other works. But uh, I think as of right now, we, we are still state of the art on this. Um, so it's very encouraging to see that attributes can really sort of go quite far on this problem. Well, so the question is, how far can they go? Right? And so we were curious about this to see, all right, we're getting 88.25 now. Can we go up to 90? Can we go up to 95, to 100? 